This is Optimal Play, where we're crossing the finish line. We've been talking for over a month about all the investigators and their cards that came to Arkham Horror, the card game, in the starter decks uh, back in August. Yeah, I'm Brandon. I'm Steven. Um, and just so you know, he's not joking. We have literally been here for a month without leaving, even though my background keeps changing. Those are all fake backgrounds. Um, yeah, yeah, you've got that Zoom. We're on, we're on Zoom. You just, you just keep changing it to, you know, l largely dull home backgrounds. <laughs> and in between each of these videos, we spend dozens of hours studying what our first impressions will be. So that's why it's taken a month straight. I mean, it, don't forget that this is take eighty-seven of just this video. So, you know, it takes it takes a few to get them right. It's worth it. <laughs> Uh, well, the light, actually, I don't think it's playing that well on camera. I was going to say the light behind me is red, and that means it's Survivor Talk. Maybe it looks more orange. Hmm. Anyway, I assure you, it looks red to the naked eye. Uh, and um, I think that it's it's last but not least with Stella Clark. She's, she's the survivor. She's also, um, I'm really excited about her as a character because she is the first that we know of, first trans character as an Arkham investigator. Uh, so so bring some new diversity to the game, which I think is really exciting. Um, so yeah, I just hope that, go ahead. Ensures that JK Rowling won't play our game. So, you know, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> that is definitely an added benefit. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just hoping to like, to, uh, enjoy her cards as much as I enjoy her character. Um, Shall wanna, I? Want to start us off? Yeah. So she is three will, two book, three fist, and four agility. So she is the only starter deck one that without a five in any stat. Um, oh, yeah. That seems like it, kind of a downer. Yeah, but I guess survivors, aside from Rita, tend to be, and I guess Yorick, they, they generally are kind of diversified. So it sort of makes mm -hmm. sense. Um, she is chosen and civic, and as a reaction, after you fail a skill test, you may take an additional action during your turn this round, limit once per round. So she would be really good, for example, for doing like 87 takes of a video <laughs> because she would get that extra take for free. <laughs> um, and her elder sign effect is plus one. You may instead choose to automatically fail this skill test to heal one damage and one horror. I can hear it. Can it hear me? Um, and she has eight and eight as her wow. sanity. So I don't know why you you put all the emphasis on chosen. I think this is our first civic investigator. It's got to be pretty exciting, right? <laughs> um. Okay. So I actually uh, we were talking b before going. Um. I and surprise we were we were kidding about all the takes uh I, I surely saw it when it was previewed but i couldn't even remember what stella did so this is i think the only one that i came in and was like i'm gonna be surprised by even the investigator card because uh, it just didn't stick in my head so she's real good at failing mm -hmm. she's so good at it she could do it more times per round than the average investigator now question if she fails the first test but then delivers the ballot on the second test. Will Trump consider that legitimate? <laughs> uh, I, th I think it, I think it depends on um, whether it came in before or after the before or after election day. But uh, yeah, it it might cause a little a little controversy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was gonna say we'll leave it up to the courts, but God forbid. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, so I expect that we're going to see a lot of new cards that lean into this archetype right off the bat. I think of stuff like take heart and there's a couple, um, there's a couple survivor cards like already. That, uh, oh, right. All the events that, yeah, if you fail at not fail, not too badly, right. You'd get to play something like, look what I found and take an additional action. That's pretty cool. Also, I think this Elder Sign seems super strong because it combos with her ability, right? She gets to she she gets to automatically fail, heal, and take another action to replace it. Like that. So, so the downside on the Elder Sign choose, the choosing to automatically fail is probably not that big, unless it's a retaliate enemy or something. I'm talking myself out of this. 
<laughs> so the automatic fail, I think it does fail at the worst possible amount, right? So you might not qualify for look what I found. True. You might not qualify for look what I found and that kind of thing. Unless, unless, it's, unless, unless it's too, too difficulty. Yeah. Hmm. Um, okay. Her deck building rules were what we'd expect at this point from the starter deck investigators. Level 0 to 5 survivor for what that's worth. And level 0 to 5 neutral. Um, interestingly, glancing at her deck building requirements, it mentions three copies of a card called Neither Rain Nor Snow. So I want to check that out. It is a it is her signature card. It looks to be a survivor skill with three wild icons. It's innate and developed, says still a Clark deck only. If this skill test fails, cancel all effects of the failed test. Nor Gloom of Night stays those couriers from the swift completion of their appointed rounds. Does this continue from another card or something, or just it's just an implied ending to? Uh, neither rain nor snow nor gloom of night stays these couriers. Oh, is that yep. is that the really? Oh, I guess. Oh, it's from the, the title of the card. Yeah, I just thought you knew that off the top of your head. Okay. No. Okay. Okay, I'm back with you. <laughs> I was really impressed and confused about why you would know that. <laughs> So she gets three copies. Yeah. I mean, even if it was just three copies of three skill icons, like that seems fine. So she's really good at failing and also really good at passing. Is <laughs> this is take... <laughs> my, my takeaway here. Um, I mean, yeah, as far as when the skill test is, fails, cancel all the effects, like there are cer certainly situations where that might be important, like retaliate enemies, haunted locations. I think a lot of the time you're just going to put this in for the three icons, even though there's not a f negative consequence to failing. Yeah, but it does seem like, I mean, often it, it might be primarily for the three icons, but if you do an auto fail against a retaliate enemy, it's still a nice backup, you know? Um, true. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I'm solid. <laughs> All right, what's our weakness? Uh, Louis to Joy, Postmaster General. Uh, <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, I wish. Uh, it is <laughs> called by the mist, uh, curse, uh, put called by the mist into your threat area. And, oh, is this the basic one? Did I skip? No, 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 this is hers. It just, it just feels like a basic weakness. Yeah. <laughs> uh, after you initiate a skill test with a difficulty of four or higher, take one damage. And for two actions, you could discard Called by the Mist. Yeah, it really feels like a basic weakness. The two actions to clear, the certain time that triggers you to take a damage. It's a lot like the basic weakness that came in Nathaniel Cho's deck that does damage to you when you fight. Yeah. Or when you and when you deal damage, I think. Um, seems fine. A signature weakness that's just two actions to clear, like... That that is not that scary. Signature weaknesses get way worse than that. Har Harvey's is going to outright kill him when you draw it, and this one's just <laughs> like, well, all right, you can have two less actions this round. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, seems fine. She uh, also has she, very good health and sanity. So true. She can afford to take a couple damage, and it's one of the a skill test with difficulty four or higher is not necessarily something unlike unlike Nathaniel's basic weakness. The name escapes me, as you can tell, because I keep saying. Nathaniel's mm -hmm. basic weakness. Uh, but unlike that card where you might be in a situation where you need to fight three times in a turn and consider taking three damage from it, there's like it's not it's rarely going to be critical for you to take a high difficulty skill test several times in a row. Yeah, I mean, especially like if you have a flashlight or something, like you might not ever have to do that for investigation. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this being her weakness does put a little bit more uh emphasis on reducing difficulty. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Um, and then her basic weakness, oh my god, okay. Uh, a a, tichif, a tichophobia? A, have you ever seen this word? Nope. <laughs> All right, we're going with a tichophobia. Uh, it's a, a basic weakness, it's a madness, a uh, revelation, it enters play. Uh, forced, after you fail skill test, take one horror. And then double action, discard a tichophobia. 
this shouldn't this be her signature work. yeah I, I think so yeah <laughs> this seems Much like a more of a mechanical tie-in to her failure theme and it seems worse i am very surprised that these two cards are not swapped from from what they are as far as which one is basic yeah i wonder if that will become <clears throat> like a fan errata to, to make this one her weakness yeah it's so it's so blatant to me that that this just makes more sense with tied into her package whereas investigating or not a uh, a skill test of just before or higher is a great basic weakness because everyone encounters some of those. Mm -hmm. Very strange to me. Uh, but anyway, ignoring that, what do you think of this? I mean, it's really bad, but it's also just only two actions to clear. So it's it's like really bad if you had to leave it, but not that bad. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's as bad as Chronophobia, which does a horror every round. Like, yes, this could do more than one horror per round, but it also could do zero. And I think it's going to, I think there are more rounds where you don't fail anything than that you fail multiple. Well, but I think for Stella, though, in per, like, I mean, Stella. yeah, sure. But we already covered that it makes sense as her okay. weakness. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, as a basic weakness, I think this is not bad at all. Yeah, I mean, there are some people, like, there are certain low-will investigators where I pretty much take tank the whole, like, treachery phase uh, in the face, and I just, like, <laughs> deal with the effects later. Um, so for someone like a Finn or a Joe, it might be really bad, too. That's a good point. You would not want to leave it around if you're not going to be passing treachery tests ever. <laughs> Uh, and especially, actually, if it combos with even a, a Frozen in Fear and you have low willpower and it's forcing you to fail a test most turns, uh, that that can get rough. Yeah. Yep. So the next card, the uh, first uh, asset, is the 18 Derringer, three-cost asset. It's a item, weapon, firearm, and illicit uh, with two ammo. And you can spend an ammo to fight. You get plus two and deal plus one damage for this attack. If you fail, put the ammo back on the Derringer. Everyone's getting the damn guns now. I thought survivor weapons were supposed to have like a, a catch, like they can break or jam or something. And this one it just has an upside. I'm except it, that it's, it, it, it's, it it's got to be an, it, twice. That's true. Yeah, and I mean it's rough because you have you only have two ammo, and if you run out of ammo, then you cannot take this test and fail to get ammo back, right? You have to you have to fail before you succeed for to keep it like going. Yeah. So it's maybe not that strong. I'm maybe not as mad about this as I was about the Mauser and Rogue. But it's I don't know. I think it's a new de new design philosophy. I think rather than guardians get all the good guns, it's multiple classes get guns, and then they have other ways of tying into the classes like guardian had this succeed or uh, rogue had succeed by by x this has failure mm -hmm. um it's it's just it's just caught me off guard i didn't expect it yeah i guess what's weird to me is like with only having two ammo um the fact that oh you could fail and use it again like i mean wouldn't it be better to just like punch them or like use events and stuff to kill them? Like having to draw this, spend three, play this to use it twice and maybe use it more than twice mm -hmm. if you fail. Like, is it even worth having ever played it? Um, um, yeah, I don't know. It does seem pretty weak. And at first, I thought of it having like assuming that there's cards that fail. And, you know, assuming that she wants to fail a lot, I was thinking, like, oh, this has infinite ammo. But you're actually, you can only succeed twice, period. Yeah, you could right? you could infinitely fail to punch. Like, yeah. Yeah, so failure just refunds the ammo. It doesn't, it doesn't get you above the ammo that you started with. So really, it's just, you know, in a vacuum, this is just saying, keep shooting, you're going to hit twice eventually. Yeah. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think it's bad, which makes me feel better about survivors getting it. <laughs> I don't think it's very good. 
Um, I also am surprised that Stella has a gun. I guess with three combat, I thought that she would be more about evasion and tricks to take care of enemies rather than just shooting them. Yeah, I mean, with plus two attack and it's not that bad to fail, um, it seems like an okay weapon for a three combat character. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. Like, there, I wouldn't want to run this in Guardians. So even if this was a Guardian card, it'd be bad. Maybe it's fine for some survivors. Oh, God, did you just teleport? I uh, just changed my Zoom background. Don't worry about it. Oh, all right, right. We covered that. Okay, okay. Uh, threw me for a loop a little bit there. Uh, I think we were just reading Grimm's Fairy Tales. Exactly. It's almost bedtime. Um, <laughs> That's right. Grimm's Fairy Tales is a two-cost asset uh, with item and tome, four secrets, uh, and reaction. After an investigator at your location fails a skill test by two or more, uh, exhaust Grimm's Fairy Tales and spend a secret to heal one horror from that investigator. Nope. Don't like it. I mean, I like that it's two or more instead of two or fewer. Uh, it's something new. Um, yeah, except it's a most cards, most of secret or survivor events and things want you to fail by only a little bit. So this actually is kind of like doesn't combo well with those. That's true. It's novel, but doesn't mean it's good. Right. It's a novel, and it's also novel. Um, no, I mean, it just seems like a lot for a little also. In addition to, I don't think I like the failing by two or more. Um, it also heals a total of four horror, and in the meantime, it takes up a hand slot for a long while, and you can't just heal that horror at will. It has to happen under certain conditions. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't think I like it. Yeah, I guess the only thing I might consider is um, Agnes because she really likes horror healing. Um, hmm. But I, the only thing that's a little frustrating is she's not necessarily going to reliably fail um, if she's doing only will tests. Yeah, that's a good point. Agnes's hand slots are not really spoken for, and the horror healing is great. It just does, yeah, yeah. She has to not only fail, but spectacularly fail. Yeah, which she's generally not going to be doing with will tests. So, like, maybe you try some investigation or something. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so could Agnes play this and deliberately fail tests just for the horror healing? Like, is that a card that's worth playing? If that's what it takes is throw away actions. Say, yeah, yeah say she does a, a, it definitely a becomes claim investigate or... It's definitely less efficient if she's doing that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think you're doing that at that point. If this is like a two cost card and you're spend essentially spending an action every time you want to heal. Hmm. Uh, maybe in a scenario in a campaign with a lot of agility tests where she's going to be failing some anyway. Like Forgotten Age, I feel like has a lot of agility tests. That's true. I'm moving on though. Uh, we've got an old key ring. This is the third hand slot item, so Stella's going to have some choices to make here. Uh, it's a one-cost survivor asset that's an item and a tool. It uses two keys. I think that's the first time we've seen key tokens. Uh, if there are no keys on old key ring, discard it. As an action, investigate. Your location gets minus two shroud for this investigation. If you succeed, remove one key from old key ring. Oh, so it's the gun, but for clues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but right. I think it, it's actually much better, though, because with this one, you still get the minus two shroud even if you fail. So there's all kinds of benefits uh, mm. in terms of, look what I found and, and just other survivor effects. Interesting. I was going to say it at least already, even ignoring that, it favor I think it compares favorably to Flashlight because I think it's one cheaper than Flashlight yeah. to play. And then it guarantees two successes. Like, I think I would take that over three tokens. Um, yeah, and then, and then you're absolutely right. Redu reducing that shroud, uh, in addition to look what I found and things working better, 
Uh, we already covered that reducing Shroud is good with her weakness, which punishes her for taking tests with, of high difficulty. So there's yeah. that. I, I like it. Yeah, definitely. And Survivor's also, it's cheap. So, and even though it only has two uses, Survivors like to recur their assets. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see whether she gets any dedicated recursion. Yeah, scavenging might, with all these limited use of items we're seeing so far, scavenging or, or something new that does something similar to scavenging, getting cards out of the discard pile would make perfect sense here. Totally. Uh, next one is Granny Orn, tough old bird. Uh, <laughs> four cost asset. Uh, you get plus one will, and then it's a reaction. While an investigator, or when an investigator at your location would fail a skill test, exhaust Granny Orn, that investigator fails by either one less or one more. Uh, and then one health, three sanity. Uh, so you're never going to use this for anyone but yourself, right? It, it theoretically works on other investigators at your location. Uh, but no, you, no, hold on. If uh, Joe fails Rotting Remains, don't you want him to fail well, by one less? Okay, true. Those like treacheries or, or things that punish you by for how much you fail by, they, they're not just player cards that care. Uh, treacheries do too. I mean, I feel like those Other are often what, what kill you. Like I've yeah. seen a lot of characters die to like, oh, I just auto failed, uh, you know, Rotting Remains. Okay, valid point. I was looking at this as, well, it can't swing a failure to a success, so most people don't care about that. But it does, situationally, some scenarios just won't have that. But plenty do, that, that this could come in handy to help your allies out, help, you, help the other players out. And then, I don't think that we have seen really... I think we haven't seen an, enough pieces of the puzzle of Stella yet <laughs> to to really see much that this is that this is too useful for. So far, we've just seen Grimm's Fairy Tales, which this could help you succeed by enough to get to heal a horror. I still don't think Grimm's Fairy Tales is not a good card, so that doesn't excite me that that is combos with it. Yeah, I guess because this has plus one will, you could theoretically run it in Agnes for like go all in on trying to fail stuff. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> bonuses to your stats and also actually you want to fail <laughs> i don't know um and actually as far as that combo with grim's fairy tales this also has three horror soaks so you don't even need to heal horror if you're running granny orn mm. okay i'm really underwhelmed by most of these cards and i'm waiting for the thing that makes them coalesce into something <laughs> Maybe it's the Mysterious Raven? It's an, a, another ally. Yeah. Uh, it's a one-cost survivor asset. It's an ally and a creature uh, as a fast effect. Discard Mysterious Raven and take one horror to discover one clue at your location. It's got an Edgar Allan Poe quote, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. Um, and it has one horror for some reason. So Grave to Your Shovel does this. It costs one more, right? Does it cost two? Yeah. But it doesn't deal a horror to you. Yeah. That seems better. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're trying to make a clue version of the stray cat, and maybe they felt like the effect was more powerful, so they had to add a horror. But it's a little it's a little odd. Yeah, and I like it might I guess it is more powerful than evading an enemy. Like I think I'd rather put a lot of cards in my deck that say discover a clue than a lot of cards that say evade enemies. But spending a card, a resource, an action, and taking a horror to discover one clue. I'm just like, what can this do in the meantime? What else can this also accomplish? And other than it's recurrable. Yeah, and it's like yeah, with things like uh Wait, what even so scavenging can't get this back? What what can recur this? Um, York. Mm, true. Um, I know it's kind of becoming a meme at this point, but like maybe Agnes wants this for like <laughs> testless damage. Um, 
I thought she wanted to fail all her tests, though. Why would she go testless? <laughs> uh, but I mean, I can kind of see. I mean, the problem is the ally slot's kind of valuable, but uh, do a damage and get a clue is kind of nice. Sure. If you say so. Not amazing. Uh, there's a reprint next. Rabbit's yeah. Foot. Are you familiar with, with the Rabbit's Foot? Yeah. I mean, this is a no-brainer for Stella. Like, mm -hmm. if she's going to be failing all the time, why not draw a card every turn? Um, I always thought it was a fun card. Uh, I don't know that it was ever, like, essential, but I feel like Stella might be the time when it is. Yeah, I want to say this is core set. Maybe it's like early Dunwich, but I think it's Corset. I think that this is one of the first cards that really defines Survivor as one of the things they do is enjoy failing. And so it makes perfect sense in Stella, who enjoys failing more than most. Um, yeah, I mean, at, at this point, I'm just trying to figure out, like, if you add all these things together... Like, okay, Rabbit's Foot plus her ability, she can fail, draw a card, and take another action. So now she's, like, in the black, right? She's actually gained by failing. She's just gained drawing a card, though. And if you compare that to, like, Harvey, who can just... Eh, he just draws another card. Like, that doesn't seem as good yet as Harvey's base ability. Yeah, still seems like you have to combo it with a Look What I Found or a uh, Take Heart, something like that. Yeah, so we'll surely see a lot of stuff like that um next though is another reprinted scrapper not Anything a reprint say? not a reprint that was a permanent. what scrapper was a permanent. oh this is the this is a, the level zero version of a permanent not a reprint of the corset talent okay all right then what's this <laughs> uh it's a two cost uh non-permanent talent uh pretty straightforward though uh mm -hmm. just you get spend one to get plus one fist or plus one evade um so i guess they just chose to include this instead of dig deep yeah dig deep is what willpower or yeah. agility yeah um okay i haven't seen anything yet that implies that she'll have much in the way of resources but yeah we'll see yep maybe from all the take cards that she's succeeding at or succeeding at failing at <laughs> right. Uh, I think that the the investigator starter decks have mostly had a, a spend resources to boost your skill talent card, whether it's a corset reprint or it's a new level zero one. And I think that's fine because it kind of demonstrates a fundamental mechanic of the game, right? Is that you're you're really focused on tests and you're kind of everything else is about setting yourself up to pass tests. And like, that is a reality of the game that it's good to teach people. So it's fine. I don't think that if I were building a Stella deck, I would put this in here. I would probably put in Will to Survive though. Uh, this is a new level zero one. Will to Survive is a leveled up card, right? Yeah. Yeah. This one is a four cost survivor event. That's a, sp it's spirit traded. So boxing clubs can find this. <laughs> uh, fast play only during your turn do not reveal chaos tokens for the next skill test you perform this turn oh that's really expensive for one test yeah I don't this doesn't seem good at all <laughs> yeah I just don't how does she have the money to spend four and it only works on you like if it if it made anyone's test successful like maybe it'd be a little better but yeah yeah. We also, at least so far, haven't seen anything where like she would have one test that would be really incredible. Mm -hmm. um, there hasn't been like anything really bomb. There's been like, oh, she could shoot a gun for two damage. And we've seen like, so this is not necessarily guaranteeing success, but if your if your skill is high enough for the test you're taking, it is. And we've seen that as a survivor mechanic. Maybe this is the first time we've seen it at level zero like survivors have lots of level not lots but a handful of leveled up cards like you catastrophe and other things that can take failures either take failures and flip them such that failure was never a possibility or just automatically succeed at things 
Um, so I guess that's what's exciting about this is that it's at level zero, but man, spending four to guarantee passing a test is a lot. I actually have a simple fix. This should say, do not reveal chaos tokens until you succeed at a test. Because then you could use it to like fail by one, fail by one, then succeed. And you get hmm. like three uses out of it. That would be interesting, especially for Stella. Yeah. But yeah, I don't see this being good right now. Oh, well. So, man, at this point, we're like, we're two thirds of the way through this deck. When is it going to make sense to me? <laughs> I mean, so far, she's been great at failing to impress uh -huh. us. So. You know, but if if failing is just drawing you cards and giving you extra actions, and all that those actions and cards are used for is more failure, how do you <laughs> accomplish anything? <laughs> I don't know. Read the, read the next card. Read the next card. All right. Uh, <laughs> sounds like this is what you're having right now. A test of will. Uh, -huh. uh A one cost event. A spirit fast. Play when an investigator your location draws a non weakness treachery card. Uh, test will three. If you succeed, cancel that card's revelation effect. Um, so it's just something she wants to succeed. Interesting. So a test of will has been printed before as a higher level version that is guaranteed to cancel a treachery, but exiles, right? Yeah. This one doesn't exile. Obviously, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, a level zero card that exiles itself would be pretty funny. <laughs> That actually would be all upside, I guess, because you could. Either, it's like a free adaptable, yeah, uh, swap. Um, so Stella's not good at passing this. She has three willpower. She has four if she has Granny Orn in play, and that's all that we've seen. And so, yes, she likes to fail, but I don't think she plays events just to create tests to fail. Yeah, I mean, what you could do is like use skill cards, stuff like that for if there's a really important weakness, you throw in a guts or something to cancel it. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a, a little trickier to pull off. Yeah, I think that this, this is a good Agnes card. <laughs> right? like, other investigators with higher base willpower, this makes much more sense in. Um, I think the card is interesting and we'll see play. I'm not sure why it's in Stella's deck. Yeah. So far, it doesn't really make sense. Agreed. Uh, well, at least she has some dumb luck, which is a two-cost event with notably two agility icons. It's a fortune. It says, fast, play after you fail a skill test by two or less during an evasion attempt against a non-elite enemy. Place that enemy on top of the encounter deck. Fortune favors the oblivious, which is a pretty good line of flavor text. So this is a reprint, right? I was just wondering that. It's got a... Is it? Does, is, is it just a reprint of a level zero? I guess you're the one looking at the computer. It's... it's you can tell us, right? Yeah. Uh, I think... Yeah, it is a reprint. It's a forgotten age. Um, hmm. So, yeah. You could have fooled um, me. I don't think I've ever played it. Yeah, I don't think anyone wanted to play it, but maybe Stella does. Yeah, maybe so, because she gets all these other benefits when she fails, and she has ways to manipulate it so that she hopefully fails by two or less. Um, it's It's interesting, because kind of putting an enemy on top of the encounter deck... If it's a bad enemy and that's why you want to get rid of it, that doesn't make it go away for long. It's kind of like canceling a... It's almost like canceling drawing an encounter card. It's almost like stargazing or something where it's a way of canceling a mythos phase's effect on you because the enemy's coming back. Yeah, although it's actually really interesting. You can just make your guardian the lead investigator, and then it'll always be your guardian that draws it instead of you. Oh. So like that it, is interesting. You can make sure the card. Oh wow. You just, so like, you just broke the game. Normally I feel like lead investigator, I pick like the new player or something mm -hmm. like that. But like this is maybe one of the first times that it there's actual strategic considerations with picking the lead investigator. 
That's a great point. If you put it on top, the lead investigator is going to draw it, barring someone drawing overzealous or something. Um, hmm, that is super interesting. In multiplayer, this can route an enemy to the guardian, and then they can kill it and ding, 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 draw cards with glory. <laughs> okay, that sells me on this a little more than I've ever been sold on it. I don't think that has ever occurred to me. Mm. Yeah. Well, Anything else on this? No, I think uh, I'm almost more excited about this than some of the new cards because, <laughs> you know, maybe this is good in Stella and certainly I've never played it. It's always exciting in card games when you can reevaluate cards that didn't make sense before or that weren't good enough before. So, yeah, I'm with you. I don't really know if I am sold on it, <laughs> it's, but it's interesting. It's still a little expensive. Well, hopefully we'll... Mm -hmm. Hopefully, we'll figure out how Stella makes her money. Um, so the next card, Grit Your Teeth, costs one. Uh, it's a spirit event. Uh, fast, play after you fail a skill test. You get plus one to each of your skills for the remainder of the round. Oh. OK, now we're getting somewhere. So finally, she's actually going to be good for a while and maybe pass some skill tests, too. Yeah, so she fails, she gets another action, so she can play this and has plus one to all of her skills for essentially an entire turn if she failed on her first action. So it's actually the remainder of the round, so you mm -hmm. can do it during a Mythos phase and get plus one to four tests. True. Okay. Um, plus one is not amazing. <laughs> Yeah, although besides intellect, most of her stats are already average. So she's at four willpower, four yeah. comp, five agility. Um, so like, I think the fact that she has average stats is like not as good most of the time. But like with a blanket plus one, now it becomes pretty good. I'll take your word for it. I don't think I'm as sold on this, but I'm having a little bit of trouble really like valuing it. I mean, to me, this is like the first card that really provides a reason to play Stella of all True. these cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just not a not a great reason, right? Like, it's not um, plus one each of your skills is obviously not nothing, but it's not accomplishing more than you would have. If like, it's not like you're dealing extra damage or discovering extra clues or really being any more efficient. It's just making you less likely to fail. Yeah, You'll, we'll still have to combo it with um, yeah. things that make you more efficient, I think. Which we haven't seen yet, right? We haven't seen anything about discovering a, a, a plural number of clues. Or <laughs> yeah, I mean, in fact, if you include the fact that the gun does four damage and you have to draw it, play it, and use it twice, I don't think it's like anything that's like more than one per action efficiency. Weird. So. All right. Well, we can live and learn. Um, this is a reprint, I believe. It's a zero cost survivor event. Correct. Please correct me if this is a level zero version of a leveled up card. It looks the same to me. No, it I says think it's fast. Yeah, it says fast, play after skill test, you failed ends. Attempt that test again, you get plus two skill value for this test. So this combo is great with Stella because she gets an extra action and gets to retake the test she's taking with plus two. So this makes perfect sense. It seems very strong and a no-brainer in Stella's deck. It is not the explanation we're seeking for, or we're looking for. Um... Yeah, it's it's definitely good, and it's one that I feel like a lot of survivors would take, except that they also have Lucky, which is often better, but it's very good. Um, yeah, and I've played this card. I like it. Yeah. Like, to... It, you're right. It is a lot like Lucky. This costs no resources, though. And it can... What can it do? Why do I feel like there's an? I mean, I guess it. I guess it's just that it triggers your rabbit's foot and stuff like that, and gives you another shot at it, which Lucky also doesn't do. Um, but it doesn't guarantee success like Lucky can. 
Hmm. Um, yeah, I think actually, like, this is a card I like better than Lucky. But it's yeah. all just kind of more survivor utility. Mm hmm. Hmm. Uh, uh, and then there's a reprint. Look what I found. We've already covered that this would be very good in here. I think it is. It yeah. gets her. It gets her clues. I think this makes perfect sense and is very strong in Stella's deck. I think this is the most important card so far. I, we just talked about how there hadn't really been efficiency yet. So the fact that you could now you're looking at like potentially discovering a lot of clues in one turn if you get two with this, then you play the one to get plus one. And maybe if you're lucky, maybe you get two or three clues with your remaining actions. So. And you can play this and then you have failed. So you could play live and learn and take the original test over again. With, with plus two to that. I think it works that way. So we're starting to see where you could use a hand of these cards to have some pretty big turns. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. Uh, I actually don't have the other cards in front of me. What's the next one? Oh, they're all reprints from here on out. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next one is <laughs> classic beloved card. It is Oops. It's a two cost event that's a fortune. Uh, it says fast play after you fail skill test by two or less while an enemy or while attacking an enemy engaged with you. Deal this enemy's damage to a different enemy at your location. This card is garbage, right? Does Stella does Stella salvage this? Uh, no, I mean I think the only <laughs> thing that might salvage this is like playing four player, where you can more reliably have two enemies. But uh, yeah, that's it's kind of weird that they even included this. This is a card that it's so niche as to be unplayable, because you have to fail by two or less. Attacking an enemy engaged with you while there's another enemy at your location. That doesn't happen every game, let alone happen while it's in your hand and while you have two resources to play it. I mean, yes, I see why it's in Stella's deck because it is a failure and she gets another action, but mm, I'm not seeing how she redeems this card. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of crazy um it is two fist icons so 99 percent of the time that's what you use it for uh fair point it is any matching icons always good she has a gun to combo it with um the last card in the deck is her only skill card it's take heart you want to rem remind us what take heart does sure uh so you put it into a skill test and uh if you if if the skill test fails you get two resources and draw two cards um yep so this is pretty essential I, I think it's the only economy card we've seen um and yeah if she's another one with very little econ in her starter deck here um so i mean it's definitely a no-brainer to uh uh but i think one of the first things you would do if you're optimizing this deck would be to also add a little more economy <laughs> i'd say so and survivors don't have a lot of it because have being poor is kind of their thing. Uh, but emergency caches would go well on this deck. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. That's the deck. I am very confused. Yeah. Uh, help, I mean, help, help me out here. I guess. He's like mostly a clover, which is actually weird because that's her worst stat. She has but, two intellect. Yeah. Uh, that's like the only thing that she's efficient at, really. Um, and like, in so yeah, she can play live and learn because she fails her investigation, but she can't get clues off of a four or five shroud location very easily. She'd have to draw a plus one. Uh, no, no, she get up to like three. Range. I think the key range. Oh, that's true. Okay, okay, yeah, she can lower shroud with that. Hmm. Man, I want to like Stella so much, and I hated everything I just read. <laughs> I do think there's got to be a way to make her work. Not not with this group of cards necessarily, mm -hmm. but like I bet there's a way to make her work. Okay. Yeah, and 
maybe it's that we are just not getting it. Maybe it's this, just that this deck list doesn't read that well on paper and people are screaming at us in the comments right now about how great she is. Like, I acknowledge that possibility. And actually, I hope that that's the case. Please scream at us in the comments about why Stella is better than, <laughs> than she's coming across. But man, I'm not seeing it here. Um, yeah, I mean, I think one thing that might happen more than we are thinking is like failing in the mythos phase. So you get four actions in the investigator phase, which is always nice. Um, That's true. I think we were kind of assuming that you could only succeed three times in the investigator phase, but you can actually potentially succeed at four things. Um, the problem I have is, and I thought I was thinking through this. I was like, well, she definitely has a fun ability. Like who doesn't love to be refunded their action if they fail because failing sucks. Like, I think that that, that is, an ability I'd be happy to play, but how does kind of how how does having a fourth action get you anywhere when your stats are two intellect three combat right? Like, what do you do with those actions? And I I don't I don't know what the I don't know what the answer to that is. Yeah, her only good stat is is agility, and evading enemies only gets you so far towards actually a, you know advancing acts and accomplishing objectives. Yeah, huh. I think she's got to be mostly a clover, but it's something a little weird. And especially unlike Wendy, she doesn't have any way to like reuse that. Um, look what I've found. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. We didn't. There was there was no recursion in here, huh? There was nothing that gets cards out of the discard pile, which we were saying as we looked at uh, the old key ring and the, what's the gun? 18 Derringer? Yeah, the new Derringer, that that would be one way that they become a lot more interesting. <sighs> this is definitely the most confused slash disappointed I think I've been with like a pack that we've looked at. Yeah, I hope I hope that people are able to make really cool decks through that. I'm sure they can. I'm sure that they're out there. And part of me just thinks we're missing something. But I don't know what it is. And the fact that she has eight damage, eight sanity, or eight horror, or eight health, eight sanity, which is above average, makes me think that that's like kind of compensating for her being well, I think <laughs> on the weak side. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I suspect that what that's saying is don't try to pass your treacheries. Just take them in the face um, mm. and then focus on doing stuff in the investigator phase. I guess, but three willpower, that's an okay willpower stat. Like that doesn't, that doesn't echo just failure treacheries to me. Well, but I mean, if you're consistently failing rotting remains by one, that's great mm. for her, you know, because she's True. still getting a failure, but she's only losing one of her eight sanity um maybe she can heal it with grim's fairy tale you know yeah hmm okay well thank you for watching this very dark episode of optimal play i mean the postal service is in real trouble right now <laughs> it's true you're not wrong that's a good time to send some extra letters maybe uh give a send a thank give a thank you note to your 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 actual postal carrier they've been going through a lot <laughs> um yeah we'll be back soon to look at the leveled up cards from stella's pack um i maybe they completely are eye-opening and help us understand this maybe they are just exciting cards and we can say okay outside of stella these are great you know may, maybe we'll <laughs> maybe that'll we'll be more upbeat about those cards I'm sure, that all the, I'm sure that all the 4 and 5 XP cards will really turn it around. Yes, all those 4 and 5 XP survivor cards are surely something to hang our hat on, yes. All right, uh, Stephen, any, any, uh, any parting words? Or I guess, I guess we've, kind of, we've kind of ranted long enough. Uh, go Lakers. <laughs> oh, is it sports season again? Yeah, I guess... By the time this comes out, uh, we might have already won like all the games. So, if if you say so, yeah. Stephen Stephen talks about sports sometimes. I just smile politely, 
try to change the subject back to Arkham Horror. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh <laughs> thank you for watching um if you have never uh, never watched optimal play and you enjoyed this we would love if you subscribe and check out our other videos where we talk about lots more arkham as well as play through lots of cool games and uh if you'd like this video comment and tell us what we're missing <laughs> we'd really appreciate that too so <laughs> steven thank you for joining me as always and uh, thank you for watching. Till next time, be optimal.